ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو محتد ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم اما بعد اي الاحباب i wanted this to be an invitation to our brothers and sisters that feel the need to defend seeking aid and support and help from other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from those people regardless of whether they are deceased or whether they're living and for those people who believe that it's permissible to put all of their trust and their tawakkul in other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those people who believe that it's permissible to seek intercession intercession from those people who have deceased regardless of whether it's the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or prophet Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam or Abdullah Hariri or Sayyid Bedawi or any of those uh, the people who came before us meaning that they have passed on regardless of whether they're white righteous or whether they are wicked that all of this ayul ahbab is proven in the quran and in the authentic sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to not be permissible and in fact to be forms considered forms of worship because those are acts of ibadah and so they all constitute shirk and this is what is apparent and zahir and clear and manifest in the Quran even before we get to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the salaf of this ummah radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in wa rahimahumullah jami'an we find that all throughout the Quran is very clear about ascribing partners to Allah and not committing any shirk and that includes seeking intercession to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْئًا And worship Allah and do not associate partners with Him. And again, in this ayat, it, it contains nafi wal ithbat and a, an amr and a nahi. So here in this ayat alone, Allah says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْئًا And worship Allah alone. And that's a command. That's in the imperative form. وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِي شَيْئًا And that's a nahi. And that's prohibition. And any time we find a the asl in in usul of fiqh, when we have a command, something in the imperative form, an amr, you feed the wujub, meaning that it is in the imperative form and that it is an obligation in its origin, unless other delil from the Quran and the Sunnah come to show that it is mustahab or it is one of the other ahkam. And likewise, ayul ahbab, that when we hear the second part of the ayat, وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا And do not associate partners uh, with Allah, any partners. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, negates all uh, shirk, all associating partners with Him, all forms of polytheism. And that right there, that's called a nahi. And when we have a nahi, a nahi, you feed the tahrim. So that nahi or that uh, prohibition from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in its origin it shows that something is muharram that if you do it so meaning that the person who does shirk this is haram this is impermissible in Islam and this is disbelief so that's just in that one ayah but now let's look at some more detailed evidences of why our brothers and sisters in Jamaat al Ahbash should make tawbah and I invite them to look Look at what I'm saying. Don't look at me. Don't listen uh, and don't uh, get excited. Don't. There's no reason to curse one another. There's no reason to slander one another. But I just want you to look at the evidences just from a few ayats. We won't even get into detail about this. There's many immense sources in Arabic, I don't know, and in English translated that we can look at these uh, these aspects of creed. But this should be a fundamental thing. We're not like the Catholics. We don't need to inter seek intercession from anyone. The intercession from the Prophet ﷺ is on the Day of Judgment. 
It's, a, it's not in this life. We don't supplicate to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the mushrikeen who advance the same argument that Abdullah Heredi and his jamaat or his, his crew, his cult. And, and, and I have to uh, forgive me for uh, in any way. I, I don't want it to jawas al had, but I want this to be beneficial for us all. But in fact, the, the way the people think, the ta'asab, that the people blindly follow and have prejudice to only certain individuals is uh, something unpraiseworthy and cult-like. Here's what Allah says, though. But let's look at what Allah says. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزَقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ قُلْ مَنْ يَرْزَقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْعَرْضِ أَمَنْ يَمْلَكُ السَّمْعُ وَالْأَبْصَارِ وَمَنْ يَخْرُجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيْتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيَّةَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ وَمَنْ يُدَبِّرُ الْأَمْرَ فَسَيَقُولُونَ اللَّهُ فَقُلْ أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this was an address, uh, he said this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is who is the, uh, being addressed in this ayat, which is subhanallah, so relevant to us even now. That's why the Qur'an, it's the word, of, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's living, and it's one of his sifat. Here's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, say, he said, you know, he's advancing the argument to those mushrikeen. Listen to this, how this applies to our brothers and sisters in Jamaat al-Ahbash. Say, who provides from, for you from the sky and the earth? Or who owns hearing and sight? And who brings out the living from the dead? And brings out the dead from the living? And who disposes the affairs? They will say, Allah. Say, will you not then be afraid, meaning of his punishment? Afala tattakun? Then why don't you have taqwa? Meaning that you... Adhere to the commandments of Allah and avoid his prohibitions and fear his punishment. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمْ الْحَقِّ فَمَاذَ بَعْدَ الْحَقِّ إِلَّا الضَّلَالِ فَأَنَّا تُسْرَفُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Such is Allah your Lord in truth. So after the truth, what else can there be except error? How then are you turned away? Now how then are you turned away to seek intercession to other than Allah? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem in another ayat, which also illustrates for us, and I'm just building this up, so be patient. Qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabi al-kareem in Surah Al-Yunus, Qul hal min shuraka'ikum may yabda'u al-khalq ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ قُلِ اللَّهِ يَبْدَأُ وَالْخَلْقِ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ فَأَنَّ تُؤْفَكُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, again, advancing an argument to the mushrikeen, Is there of your uh, associates, meaning those people who you, those so-called partners, one that originates the creation and then repeats it? Say, Allah originates the creation and then repeats it. Then how are you deluded away from the truth? Again, I think we can agree that Allah is a creator of the heavens and earth, and He Yudabur al Amr, that He uh, organizes our affairs. Those things, I think we have no uh, discrepancies between us in Jamaat al Ahbash or the extreme Sufis, or even the Jews and the Christians for that matter. But then, when it comes to the detailed aspects of Tawheed and worship, this is where we differ with all of them, every single one of them. The arguments of Jamaat al Ahbash are similar to the arguments of the Catholics. Here's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, dealing with those arguments. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي كِتَابِهِ الْكَرِيمِ قُلْ حَلْ مِنْ شُرَكَائِكُمْ مَنْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ قُلِ اللَّهِ يَهْدِي لِلْحَقِّ أَفَمَنْ يَهْدِي إِلَى الْحَقِّ أَحَقَّ أَنْ يُتَّبَعَ أَمَنْ لَا يَهْدِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al -kareem, Say, is there of your so-called partners one that guides to the truth? Say, is it, uh, it is Allah who guides to the truth. Is then he who guides to the truth more worthy to be followed? 
or he who finds not guidance himself unless he is guided? Then what is the matter with you? How do you judge? How can you seek intercession? And how can you supplicate to people who died? And people who could not help themselves? And people who required the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ayul Ahbab. Let's get now down to the text from Kitabillah, which are Nasus Sari'i, which dealt exactly with the Mushrikeen and the heart and the crux of the matter of Jamaat al Ahbash and what they say and their arguments regarding uh, it seeking intercession from the dead. A'udhu billah min thalika, or isti'ana or istighatha having your hope and having your 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 fear and your 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 uh seeking uh support from other than Allah wa iyadhin billah min dhalika kufr wa shirk wa zandaka listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem qala Allah ta'ala fi kitabi al-kareem ala lillahi ad-din al-khalis wal ladhina takhudhu min dunihi awliya ma na'buduhum illa li yuqarribuna ila Allahi zulfa inna Allah yahkumu baynahum fi ma hum fi ma hum fihi yakhtalifun inna Allah la yahdi man man huwa kadhibun kafar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitabi al-kareem say the religion meaning the worship and the obedience is for Allah alone and those who take awliya, protectors, helpers, lords, gods, besides him, say, here's their argument. This is Jamaat al -Afbash. We worship them only that they may bring us near to Allah. Verily, Allah will judge between them concerning that wherein they differ. Truly, Allah guides, not him who is a liar and a disbeliever. Jamaat al Ahbash, Ayy al Ahbab, and many of those others, they will not say that they worship. They don't say that intercession is worship. That's not even what we are arguing there. But what they are saying, Ayyul Ahbab, they're saying that it's permissible to seek intercession and to seek barakah from the graves and from the dead and from their saints. Wa'iyadhan billah min dhalika and those extreme Sufis. Ayyul Ahbab, these creeds are alien to Islam and as we've just shown that the mushrikun, that they said that we only worship and seek, you know, intercession from uh, our, our our saints and our supporters and our helpers to bring us nearer to Allah. Is not this the same argument that Jamaat al Ahbash says that they go, that that is permissible to seek baraka and they try to use fabricated narrations from a hadith and they really have no hujja, no dalil, no evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, nor the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah for doing this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, wa ya'budun min duni lahi ma la yudurruhum wa la yanfa'hum wa yuqulun ha'ulai shufa'a'una inda Allah. In Surah Yunus, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says and de deals, deals with this, this creed, this innovated creed, but in fact, this is the sunnah of the mushrikeen. So I advise our brothers and sisters in Jamaat al Ahbash and any other extremist Sufi sects to go back, look at the arguments of the Quran and run from shirk. Make tawbah and come to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says fi Kitab al Kareem, as we mentioned, wa ya'budun min duni Allah. They worship other than Allah. Ma la yadurhum, those who cannot harm them, wa la yanfa'hum, nor can they benefit them. And they say that those are our intercessors with Allah. SubhanAllah. Who from the saints can help you? Can Sayyid Bedui? Can the Tijani uh, uh, or Abdul Qadr al uh, Jailani or the Tijani uh, leader or any other people? Can any of them help you? Could they help themselves and prevent death? No matter how many fabricated stories that are almost like fantasy and uh, and mythology tales of uh, of mythology that you can fabricate and come up with, none of those 
can do your argument and your creed justice except going back to the Quran. And the Quran defeats, it knocks the brains out of falsehood. Truth destroys haq. Uh, haq destroys batil. The truth, it destroys falsehood. So I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by all of his divine names and attributes, guides us and you. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was for myself and the shaitan. And I invite you to please bring evidence from the Quran and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to substantiate your creed. And listen to this last portion of a hadith. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, said, and this is also a command, it's in the imperative state, uh, form. Qala alayhi salatu wasalam, fi dhista'antu fista'in billah. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, said, if you seek assistance, you know, help, isti'ana, this is a form of uh, ibadah, of worship, then seek it from Allah. And again, this was all in the imperative form. Meaning that if you're going to seek, uh, this is absolute, if you're going to seek isti'ana, then seek it from Allah. It's imperative. We have no evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the evidence of the Salaf of this Ummah to support seeking this isti'ana from other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Not even from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, especially after he والسلام, died. We cannot take our, our, our challenges and our difficulties and our strife to the Prophet والسلام, who died. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and as the Sahaba ajma'in witnessed. So we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us guidance. وَصَلَى اللَّهُ وَسَلَمْ عَلَى نَبِيِّنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَى عَلَيْهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَسَلَمْ